Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! C9 A minor at 11 F13 What notes are in these chords? If you don't know it yet, this video will explain it to you. Before we start, to understand this video, you need to know how to build major and minor triads, and if you do not know how to do it, have a look at the super basics of music theory video that is linked on the top right, and you need to know how to build the seventh chords, and if you do not know how to do that, have a look at the seventh chord video, always on the top right. So first of all, let's understand what those numbers 9, 11, 13 actually mean. So let's take a major triad, and let's do everything in C, shall we? The C major triad is C, E, G. Now, normally we will call those notes C, E and G, the root or first, the third and the fifth, and that's because if you write a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, the root is the first note, the third is the third note of the scale, and the fifth is the fifth note of the scale. So far, so good. But now, let's imagine we are continuing this scale at the higher octave. After B, which is the seventh, we have C, which is the eighth note, only one octave higher. So let's just write an eight under the first C, and then if we keep counting, under the E we should write a ten, and under the G we should write a twelve. This higher number here just means that the notes is supposed to be at the higher octave. Nothing strange. Now, if we take the notes that it's two frets above the root, we're gonna call this note the ninth of the chord, and in this case it's D, two frets above the C. If we take the note, who is one fret above the major third, which is F, we're gonna call this note the eleventh, and if we take the note two frets higher than the fifth, which is the A here, we're gonna call this note the thirteenth of the chord. The same will work with the minor chord, just remember that in the case of the minor chord, the eleventh is two frets above the third, because we have the minor third here. So now, here is the rule. If you only have an odd number, like C9, this means that you have to include all the odd numbers up to that. So on the C9, you include 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, all the odd numbers up to the 9. So the notes of C9 are C, E, G, B flat, D. B flat being the minor seventh, which is the seventh we include by default, and if you're unfamiliar with that, go and look the seventh chord video. Another example, C eleventh. We include all the notes up to the eleventh. So the one, the three, the five, the seven, the nine, the eleventh. C E G B flat D F. If we had instead a C minor 9, we would instead have a C minor triad, but we will still add the 7th and the 9. So we'll have 1 flat 3, because it's a minor, 5, 7, 9, and the notes will be C, E flat, G, B flat, D. And you can do this, of course, with any root. So if you have, for instance, an A minor 11, you have to put in the A minor triad, 1 flat 3, 5, then again all the odd numbers until the 11, so 7, 9, 11. So the notes are A, C, E, G, B, D. If you have a chord like a G13, then again you put in the G major triad, then the 7, 9, 11, and 13, all the odd numbers up to 13. So the notes in this case are G, B, D, F, A, C, E. And this is a 7 note chord, which is gonna be pretty hard to play on a 6 string guitar, but you're gonna see later what do we do in this case. Now, what if we want to change some notes? Well, every time you have a sharp, you raise that note by a half step. Every time you have a flat, you take down this note by a half step. So, for instance, rather than having a C9, I can have a C7 with a flat 9. So, I still put in the 1, 3, 5, 7, and I put in the note that is one half step lower than the 9. So, I have C, E, G, B flat, D flat, with this D flat being the flat 9. I can also have a C9 with a major 7. Rather than putting in the standard minor 7, I put in the major 7, and the notes are C, E, G, B, D. Another example, C11 with a flat 9. First I write a C11, which is C, E, G, B flat, D, F, and then I remember that it's written flat 9, so I take my 9, my D, down to D flat. So the notes are C, E, G, B flat, D flat, F. 
or I can have a C9 with a sharp 5. C9 needs C, E, G, B flat D. The sharp 5 tells me to take the G and raise it up to a G sharp. All those examples may sound complex right now, just remember that the 9th is always 2 fret above the root, the 13th is always 2 fret above the 5th, and the 11th is always 1 fret above the major 3rd, or 2 frets above the minor 3rd, so you always know what are those notes for any major or minor chord. Now, what if instead you do not want all the notes up to a certain number. What happens, for instance, if you want the note A, C, E, D? So you want the A minor note, A, C, E, and D, which is the 11th, but you don't want the 7th and the 9th. In this case, you write the word add, A, D, D, and you call this chord an A minor add 11, which means just the triad notes plus the note you want. So, recapping, if you have just an odd number, you need to put in all the odd numbers up to that number, 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. If you have add, you put in the triad and only that note indicated, but not all the other odd numbers up to that. So, for instance, a C at 9, it's C, E, G, C major, and then you add the 9, which is D, so the notes are C, E, G, D. Now, the problem for us guitar player happen when you have chords like the G13 we've seen before. Again, G13 contains the note G, B, D, F, A, C, E. In fact, it contains all the notes of the C major scale played all together. Those are seven notes, and most of us have only a six string guitar, but even if you have a seven string, it's quite hard to play all those notes at the same time. So what do you do in this case? Well, conventionally, what do we do is that we start omitting notes. So we choose some notes that we don't play. The first note to go is usually the fifth. Sometimes you can eliminate even the third or the root, but not both at the same time. But in general, any note can be omitted. So, for instance, G13 is usually played on the guitar with only four notes, G, B, F, and E the root, the third, the seventh, and the thirteenth. And you omit the fifth, the ninth, and the eleventh. Another example, G eleventh. This is G, B, D, F, A, C, sixth note. But when we play it on the guitar, it's actually usually played as F over G, meaning the F triad over the bass of G. Or if you prefer, G, F, A, C. In this case, I omit the third B, and the fifth D, and that's how it sounds. Now, once you have found what notes are in those chords, it's just a matter to find those notes on your guitar in a way that you can play. And now, there are many, many ways of playing these chords on your guitar, or even on your piano, and then there are many, many ways to use them and connect them. The word of harmony is really a wonderful word to discover, and there are great sounds to be discovered there, and a lot of things to be learned that make your music better and better and better. And if you want to learn that to help you, I created a course called Complete Chord Mastery, which is a complete video course made specifically for guitar. So this is not like any other course out there that explains music theory from a piano point of view. I would never ask you to grab a keyboard and play there. Everything is done on the guitar fretboard and we can see how all the theory can be done there, all, everything can be understood on the guitar, we see how to play those chords on the guitar, how to connect together, how to create parts that sounds like a guitar and not like just a recycled piano. If you want to know more about this course, click on the link on the top right. If you like this video, smash on that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any friends who's interested in those chords with 9s, 11s, 13s, and all that, share this video with them. If you have any question, or any request, or any comment, write them down in the comment. I always read my comment and I make video based on them. This is Tommaso Zillio of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com, and until next time, enjoy!